YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back. It's Tennessee Titans Day. We've done, this is our fourth team we've done in this series. Playlist on the channel. Going to do every single NFL team. Make sure to comment on this video on which team I should do next. We're going over what to watch, what to expect, some questions, surprises possibly, players to watch, games to watch, and fans takes. We're doing that in all these videos for every team. The Tennessee Titans, I actually think... Maybe the most underrated team in football today, based on how people are talking this offseason. And I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm not trying to say they're going to be crazy good or a, a great playoff team. I don't even have them in the playoffs right now, even though I do think they can be sneaky. Um, you know, But I think, take a look at most people, their power rankings, how they talk about the Titans. They got them in the very bottom of the league, like bottom five, bottom three for people. I've seen you know 31st. For quite a few people, and to me, that I think people are severely underrating them. I think they're much better than that. Uh, very sneaky, very underrated. They're, they're more balanced than people give them credit for, I, I believe. And um, I, I just, I think they're, I think they're going to shock some people. I think they're going to surprise some people. But top three things to watch, you should watch, in my opinion. Maybe some of these things will surprise some people this year. But now you can be ready. Number three, I, I think there's a decent shot. This ends up being the most improved passing offense. You know, the passing game could take that much of a leap was towards the bottom of the league last year. And remember, Will Levis got thrown into that situation. I, For the most part, I thought he impressed. I, he was a little better than I expected, especially getting thrown into that shit situation there. And now he's going to go full year as a starter, knows it's his job, learned a little bit, got a little bit of experience under his belt. Uh, they actually they actually have receivers. There's a, They have receivers outside of DeAndre Hopkins. They have a three-headed monster, really. And I think Kelvin really should be the best one, but Hopkins was very solid Will Levis last year. And then Tyler Boyd is a tough slot receiver. But adding Brian Callahan is the big one here. Just more of today's style offense, not that old-school stuff that the Titans have been running with for, for some time. Um, you know, And a pass-minded, we think, uh, offensive coach in Brian Callahan coming from the Bengals. They did a great job there, and then he got his receiver series. He got some running backs and catch the ball. Will Levis obviously can sling the ball around. So um, I really think it's a it's got to be a, like it's a disappointment if it's not a major step up in the passing game. Uh, a little bit more consistency this year, but could they be? I'd watch for them to maybe be the most improved pass game in the entire league. And the other teams that would that come to mind could probably have a list of teams, but the Jets, because they're, they're actually going to have Aaron Rodgers healthy, we would think this year. And the Bears adding Caleb Williams, they, in the, they had a pretty poor pass offense as well last year. So those are the teams to watch. I think the Titans might be the front runner for that. Uh, if we were to talk about that category there, uh, we'll come back to the offense and what, what it, what uh, they can show us this year. But first talk about defense, number two, take a look, take a look at that run defense and that secondary combine those things, uh, how it looks like on paper, the additions that they brought in. And even at, you know, their coach, their defensive coach, defensive coordinator now is Denard Wilson, who was uh, with the Ravens last year, did a great job with the Eagles the year before, did a phenomenal job. He has the DB background, right? Uh, so he should be able to work with that secondary pretty well. But they kind of stacked up the corner group there. Legereus Sneed is one of the very best in football. He comes in. I think it's a good coach to play for to and, and uh, you know to keep him playing to where where he was playing at a very high level. Shadobi Awuzia is on the other side, who went healthy, been very solid for the Bengals. A pretty good cornerback too. McCreary is good, who they already had in the slot. Um, so the secondary looks strong because of the coaching, because the players they added, the players they have. Uh, and then you look at the run defense. I'm a big run defense guy. Like I preach it every year. Like people think because it's a passing league, it's not as important anymore. It is, it's way more important. It's one of the more important things for a team. Cause if you can't stop the run, you, you're not going to win big games. You're just not because it's an easy way for teams to beat you and control the clock and give you limited chances. You have to be able to stop the run. And the Titans were the years they were making the playoffs where their defense was is a stud stout defense. Their best thing about them, they were stopping the run at a very, very high level led by Jeffrey Simmons, who they still have. And I still, and we're going to talk about more, more about him in this video. I think uh, has a lot of upside still, even though he's great already. Um, but I, and then last year, the run defense took a little bit of a dip uh, compared to the elite years there, but I think it gets back on track. I think adding Tavondre Sweat is huge. I was a, I was a maybe the biggest Tavondre Sweat fan. Off the field issues, gotta he's got to fix those, obviously. But 
Uh, this guy is a monster. He He's a day one run stopper. I think he has upside getting after quarterback, but that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, it's a guy that is just so big of a body and such a good mover for that size that he has to be doubled, and you're dealing with him and Jeffrey Simmons on the inside. It's a wall in there. Like this, this team, I know the linebackers, it's a little bit of a question with the linebackers, but I think in a team like a team like the Lions last year, they went from worst to first, not actually, but close. Uh, in terms of run defense, and they didn't have the greatest play at linebacker. It was all up front with the D line and how they're coached and how those guys are used. Um, you know, so the Titans, I think, kind of can be like that with Jeffrey Simmons and Devondre Sweat. So if they stop the run on running downs, which I really think they'll do at a high level, uh, and forcing teams to pass on them, uh, they have a pretty damn good secondary. So I think you, you combine the, the, that those two groups. It's something to watch for this year. That that those things will make their defense and and edge rush is very very important. I think they got some ball players there, but um, how good will they be? Will Landry stay healthy? Arden Key's been a rotational guy, but a damn good one. But he's gonna have to step up in a bigger role as well. Um, so a lot of pressure on those guys. But at first glance, I'd say maybe not. I mean they're, they're gonna. You know they're going to be put in obvious pass situations where they can just get after the quarterback and they'll have some good coverage behind them, give them a little bit of time to get after the quarterback. So I think that that combo will make that defense really watch out for that run defense. Uh, and then number one, uh, watch for this offensive balance that they're about to have or they could have, and I think that will create that will uh, result in them being very unpredictable. The balanced offense will create unpredictability here, which is huge. You always want offensive coordinator, play callers, just offense in general to be unpredictable, but sometimes it's not their fault. Sometimes teams are limited. They end up being one-dimensional. They can't do one thing very well, so the play calling gets predictable. It's not always the offense coordinator's fault for that reason, but I love the balance. That's my favorite thing about the Titans right now, heading into this year. They're... You know, you you would think, you would think Brian Callahan coming from the Bengals, pass first team. That's all they did was pass the ball, it felt like, uh, you know, loaded at receiver, uh, you know, and, and they, they bring Callahan in, you know, so you think the same thing and they start adding receivers. They have, a, again, a three-headed monster at receiver, you know, so you think you're in Will Levis can sling it, obviously, as a cannon. So you're thinking it's pass, pass, pass. It's a Bengals team. It's, and I'd say not so fast. Callahan's kind of bringing his own, and they're going to be good. It's going to, we talked about it. it's going to elevate the passing game for sure, and that's probably number one. If he had to pick pass, run, I'm going to guess pass, but uh, he's going to bring his own flavor over. And the first sign of that is them getting Tony Pollard to a pretty big deal. Like they they valued that, they valued the running back position very very much with Tony Pollard and already having a an up and comer in Ty J Spears. Um, you know, so they, they valued a lot, basically. And adding Latham, who, who I think is going to be good. I was kind of high on Latham as well. Uh, but he's polished as a run blocker right away. Uh, there's going to be some run to their game. So I think they're going to be fairly balanced. I think going into any week, it's going to be, it could be mixed. It could be a passing attack, could be a running attack, which kind of creates, un, you know, creates unpredictability. And it's, Tough game plan. Like, what, what do we focus on more? So, I love that 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 balance. They, I expect them. It's not not a sure thing, but it's kind of a question. But I expect them to have. So that's a big, big thing there. And kind of going more into the tough game plan. Like, it's a fresh new team, like new coach on both sides of the ball, uh, new players. They finally have receivers. It's not that same old tight. They don't have Derrick Henry anymore, obviously, but it's not that same old Titans team that is just. You know, smash mouth football, just pound pound the ball. You're, you're trying to control the clock every game, no matter who you're playing. It's just not really the way anymore. When it works, it works, but it doesn't work against any team, every team. Um, you know, but they're a much different look now. And, and there's even going to be some different running schemes, a lot of inside zone and gap um, from the Bengals' offense uh, of system last year. And actually, the Browns and, and Bill Callen, their offensive line coach, uh, they actually geared more towards that last year. So a little bit different looks here uh, for the Titans, not just the passing game. But I, I think they, they can, especially early in the year, no one's really going to know how, like, what, what, what's the game plan here? Like, how do we deal with this? What are they going to throw at us? So they have an opportunity to, to make a statement uh, and get, get a hot start early in the year. But um, all this being said, like, the biggest question that can kind of stop all this and stop them from being – you know, like my most underrated team and maybe proving the people right that the, at the bottom will, yeah, how will Levis play? Like what if he struggles a little bit? But mainly 
I think he'll play all right. Uh, mainly it's that offensive line and mainly the right side. Uh, how will they be? But that's something I almost threw up here too. It's going to really decide a lot when it comes to this team because if they can't pass protect, then they, they are, aren't are balanced. They end up being more of a running team. Uh, I'm not really too worried about the run blocking uh, that much. I'm not going to guarantee it's great or anything like that. Uh, but they do bring in maybe the best offensive line coach in football in Bill Callahan. Um, so I think by default he makes them better, and I do think they, they added some pieces, pieces and Skaronsky could take a step up as well. Um, so that is also a big thing to watch, but kind of the positive things that maybe people aren't talking about that much, kind of what makes the Titans underrated in my eyes, that is what's on your screen. Uh, they're tough to pick three players to watch. I'm going to go with actually who I think there is their best player at number three. That's really not the reason he's up here, uh, but Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, monster. I, I think he has. He's not really. He's a. He's a lead at times. I, but no one's calling him an elite player. I think people maybe should be after this year. I think could be. I, Aaron Donald's gone out of the league. Is there going to be an Aaron, another Aaron Donald? It's an, almost impossible to say. There probably won't be. Maybe the best at his position of all time. That good. But if somebody was kind of going to take over as like the new Aaron Donald, like going forward. I know Chris Jones is the best he tackle football right now. But just going forward for like the the upside, like the throughout their career. If I had to pick one, I'm going to pick Jeffrey Simmons to be that guy. I still think the upside through the roof. I mean, he was an elite prospect. He just had the off the field issues in the injury uh, and he's shown the flashes. He's been great. Uh, I think people know he's great, but again, I don't think people are talking like he's like borderline elite. I, I think he's there. I think he's that good and he's only going to get better. Um, uh, should be better defensive coaching out there. That should help. They've added some pieces at corner, so uh, you know that should help him in the pass rush game. You know, interior his interior presence in the passing game, I should say. But adding to to Vondre Sweat again, who I was a massive fan of, next to him, Jeffrey Simmons has been doubled a ton because he's a m- mammoth of a dude, and he's just that much. Mainly, he's just that much of a problem. But Devondre Sweat, because how big of a body is he is. He has to be doubled, especially in the run game, but he has he has to be doubled. Like, if you don't double him, he's going to collapse the pocket. It's not if you don't double him, he's going to go sack the quarterback every time. No one's saying that. But he is going to just swallow everybody up. He's going to collapse the pocket because that that's his game. He creates for his teammates. And you got a star player here next to him. It's really hard to double both. Uh, I don't think you could do it. And uh, so it's going to create even more for Jeffrey Simmons. So I'd watch for him to be one of the best, very best defensive players in football this year. Uh, so it's a big time player to watch for. Number two, maybe a little bit surprised I didn't put him at one, but Will Levis, um, you know, who you could easily put at one. A lot of eyes on him. How will he be this year? Uh, you know, quarterbacks get such a short trial these days. Uh, you know, to make a decision on them if you you find another quarterback or not. So he has to play fairly well. Um, I think he'll play pretty solid, but, you know, he's – offensive line's a little bit better, still a question there. But all, I didn't put any offensive linemen on this list because I, I, I think it's more of a unit thing. It's more of a unit thing. Like if one, like one guy's not going to play great and the rest of you are going to be terrible, you know. So I, I think it's more of the unit's got to come together – uh, you know, and play pretty well. Obviously, we're looking at the rookie mainly in J.C. Latham with the second-year guy and Peter Skaronsky. But um, Levis, I, I think his upside is through the roof. He's still kind of like a boomer bust type type of guy, still essentially a prospect. But uh, two years ago in Kentucky, uh, his second to last year, I thought this guy's a future top five pick. And after that last year, I kind of went south on him a little bit because um, it didn't play as well. A little bit of lack of touch on the ball, but it was a disaster situation with that offensive line there. And then he got thrown in the, uh, I thought, a bad situation. That's not good for anybody. Anybody. And a rookie quarterback that was drafted in the second round, not the first round. I thought, and he had his hiccups, of course, but I thought he played pretty damn well, uh, you know, you know, in, in his moments, in, in, in his time last year. So it's a good sign for this year. But, you know, playing under Brian Callahan, he has receivers now. Uh, he has running backs that can catch the ball very well if he has to kind of uh, go to that bailout spot. So uh, all eyes on him. And again, I could see him. I can see him playing. Like, could he be like a like a Jordan Love? Like, I mean, sim- similar skill skill sets, really. Uh, similar strengths and weaknesses. I, somewhat similar style. I and mean, Jordan Love's way ahead of Will Levis now. 
It's even hard to say that because Jordan Love, we didn't know what to expect going into last year, and he struggled early on, and he really took off at the end. So could Levis do something like that? You know, could he? So could he be like a top 15 quarterback this year? You know, I can see that. And if he's that good with what the rest of this team has, the coaching, what they've added, it could really make or break this team. So it's a big-time player to watch. But number one, I'm, I'm actually going to go with the, with the new guy here in Calvin Ridley who is expected to be their best receiver, but it could be DeAndre Hopkins, and they do have Tyler Boyd. Hopkins and Levis had a good connection. Like, Hopkins wasn't getting any action with Tannehill. Uh, Levis comes in. They had a connection, so that could be pretty good. So I would expect a full, full-time, full uh, more distractions You know, everywhere else for Hopkins. Everyone's not just focused on him because he's the only receiver. He can continue to be very, very, very productive. So he could be the best receiver uh, I would expect him to be good and very productive. Uh, I think Ridley is definitely more of a consistent separator. But why he is number one, well, I, I think a, somewhat of a small reason, probably bigger than a small reason, but they brought him in for a reason. They gave him a huge, huge payday. They want, they need him to, like, it's a perfect guy for Brian Kellen's offense for him to work. Um, him and him and Ridley and Levis got a click. It's gonna, They're going to make each other better, you know, for, for those reasons. Um it's, it's a big reason he's up here. But something else I want to point out that really isn't being talked about a lot. Um, I, I think people people almost talk like Ridley was a little underwhelming last year. And I, I disagree with that. People know he's productive. He's really good. He did drop the ball a little bit. There were more receivers in, the, in Engram, including a tight end on the Jags, that had more drops. Uh, but he, he could catch the ball a little bit better. So... 1,000-yard receiver, it's a little bit easier these days. So people are like, is he worth that money? But something that people don't talk about, the guy was out of football for some time. You know, and kind of even going, let's backtrack a little bit more. When he came in out of Alabama, I actually thought he was a little underwhelming his first couple years. And then he kind of got going. Then he got going like, okay, this is that quick separator, good hands, you know, home run ability receiver from Alabama that we expected. Calvin really kind of just got going, I thought. Um, I actually thought he was a little on the overrated side when he first came in. People just thought automatically he was going to continue to be that guy. And, he, and people were almost like speaking into existence. He really wasn't there yet. But I think he got there, and then boom. Out of football, you know, suspension, out of football for a bit. He comes back last year. And Lawrence had his highs and lows too, so it's not like he had perfect quarterback play. 1,000-yard receiver, Big plays, especially against the Titans. He diced them up. Um, you know, really, you know, again, really good home run, a bit like big playability down the field, like game changing plays. I thought for being out of football for that long, pretty damn impressive, actually. I don't think that gets talked about enough. And now going going to the Tennessee Titans where um, he's got a young gun gunslinging quarterback and a lot of pieces, you know, like we talked about, should be a balanced offense in general. He's got DeAndre Hopkins, Tyler Boyd with him, should open things up for him. Um, I, I think that's something to watch. Like, watch for him getting better. I don't think that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, people are talking about, like, he'll be Calvin Ridley. Be pretty good. Um, will he be as good as, as he was in the Jags? He'll be a little better, be a little worse. Watch for him to actually show signs of upside going into this stage of his career. I think it's certainly possible. So that is the main reason I put him number one. Hard to leave some guys off. Could have put Legereus Need, their new star corner in there. Uh, Arden Key, I think, is a pretty big one. Um, you know, his role kind of being increased a little bit. I think he's a good player, but how will he handle like an like a all time you know edge rusher, not just a kind of this chess piece? Um, so there's a lot of guys you can put uh, some of the offense linemen, of course, uh, here for for players to watch. Uh, for games to watch, uh, I'm gonna go with Week One, and that is if you if you've listened to me for a long time, what do I? It's kind of getting to that time of the year. What do I always preach? Don't have any major takeaways from teams on week one. It really doesn't mean much. It's just get, I mean, it means, you know, you got to win. Get out of there with the win. That's all it means. You can't have any big takeaways, predict the future based on a team's play in week one. So it's not really as important, but I put week one up here. I think it's a massive, massive game in Chicago against the Bears. And that is because to me, they're the same teams. I think they're the same teams. And these, these were two teams before the schedules came out. I had on my radar is teams that will watch, you know, depending on who they play, will upset some teams that probably people think are better than them uh, because the game plan factor, like not knowing what to expect from these teams and how big, like are they going to throw all day on us? Are they going to run? Are they going to try to do both? They're both the same team. So they're playing against each other. 
they're kind of both in the same exact situation, still learning, you know, new offensive coaches, new players, um, you know, and again, what are they going to do? What's the game plan? Like, uh, are they going to throw Caleb Williams, Will Levis with those, all those the receivers aired out all game? One ad, I added DeAndre Swift, one added Tony Pollard. Are they going to pound the football all game? Um, Legereus Need versus Jalen Johnson, like two star corners from last year. I think pretty similar in skill sets. Uh, you know, both stop the run very, very well. I'm expecting to stop the run very well. New teams that are going to be tough to game plan for in week one. I think it's a massive game. I think it's huge. I cannot wait for it. So I had to put that one up there. At the Dolphins in week four, I think this is kind of where the, you know, maybe the Titans get going, where everyone's kind of ready to go. Uh, but it's also still a tougher game plan early in the season for a team like the Dolphins. They played each other late in the year last year, prime time. It was a weird, weird game. Everyone everyone in their mother expected the Dolphins to win that game, um, and especially down the stretch of that game. And the Titans pulled off the upset. Levis, show, that's where he kind of showed flashes, but there were some disastrous moments. There were some messy moments for the Titans, and they still came back and won that game. So... So it showed life, it showed inexperience, it showed that they could, that you had the upside, it shows that they can, hey, they maybe they got some momentum, you know, they got, they can dig themselves a little bit of a hole, and it is a whole new look team this year, but maybe they got a matchup issue, for or the Dolphins have a matchup issue with the Titans, so maybe we'll learn a little bit from, you know, at the end of last year with this one, uh, and do the, do the Dolphins re- redeem themselves in a game like this, but the Dolphins want to, yeah, they they want to attack those corners, and the Titans got good corners, and uh, you know, in so that that should be a good matchup. You know, it's a tough one for the Titans, but it should should be a pretty good one. And then you got to put the Bengals on here. Fast forward to Week 15, could playoffs be on, like a wild card spot be on the line for the Tennessee Titans? They're at home against Cincinnati. Brian Callahan versus his old team. He he knows they're gonna know they're gonna know a little bit. Uh, you know what they're about here. I think Brian Callahan has the edge because he's gonna bring his own flavor of calm play, his playbook and calm plays Tennessee, which maybe Zach Taylor did not see. Uh, and then Brian Callahan is, is used to Zach Taylor's offense playbook. Joe Burrow, of course, they're gonna switch things up you know, a little bit more. But uh, another thing I kind of wanted to point out when we were talking about the balance, maybe the running game uh, for the Titans is. I think he's. Uh, I think I did touch on it a little bit. He's valuing a little bit more the run game, I believe, than in Cincinnati. Like, I mean, signing Tony Pollard to a big deal is kind of a, the a most obvious uh, thing that kind of stands out there. But the Bengals got rid of Joe Mixon. They added, you know, Zach Moss, who's pretty solid to somewhat of a cheap deal. You know, they're not really valuing that much. And then Brian Callahan over here with, with Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears. Valuing it pretty much, so it, it kind of proves that there's gonna be a little bit more running game than you think, and uh, he's bringing his own flavor to Tennessee. So I like that. I like it. Uh, but those are three big, and obviously the division games are pretty important. It's a tough division now. Um, you know, the Texans are the favorites. The Jags, do they continue where they left off? I think they're too good of a team for that, and they kind of can get back on track to where they were. So they're tough. And the Colts are a tough game plan. They're a tough team. They play. They play teams tough always. Like they're. They're not the best team in the world, but they're going to challenge teams every single week. Um, you know, so that's a really good. De- I, for some reason, those Titans Colts games are always wild. Um, so those are big ones as well. I just don't want to list the division rivals on here because it's obvious those are the games to watch. Uh, and then we'll take a look at uh, some some fans takes here. Uh, X subscribers automatically will get their their posts on here. Uh, and then we took another one from our regular followers on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call, call it. But Gavin Mallard, uh, yeah, I think people are kind of talking about the same stuff. Will Levis development's a big thing. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Bill Callahan, we touched on it a little bit. The offense line is a big question. How will it be? It was it was the worst in football last year. God awful. Skaronsky, Latham, I didn't know play pretty well. Uh, right tackle, battle, yeah, a couple guys. Um that could could battle for that spot. Everybody kind of mentioned it. I thought I'm kind of blocking a little bit, but uh, Evan uh, mentioned it as well. I, he listed off some guys. There's a lot. Yeah, the right side of the line because Latham's going to play left. I like Lath- Latham. He'll have some growing pains. Peter Skronsky will play left guard. He's going to be fine. The, Lloyd Cushenberry's at center. He's going to be good. So center to the left looks pretty solid. Right side. Brunskill, maybe the favorite to play right guard. Um Raiden's he's been weird. It's like it's almost like when are we gonna see the full Raidens? Does he have upside? Is he gonna play? What is he gonna play? Right guard, right tackle? Could be the same thing this year. 
Uh, somebody else mentioned you know, hearing good things about him. So, um, and they traded for Watson from the Browns. So Callahan saw something there. I think more so upside, but does he get on the field? Sadiq Charles has struggled so far in his young career, but he was he was on that LSU team, which in my opinion I think was the very best college football team I've ever seen. Offense line was great. He was fantastic tackle, uh, but yeah, he could play tackle or guard. But with the he was with the Commanders, not really the best situation, not really the best offense line. Um, now with Bill Callahan, really the you know the best offense line coach football. Watch out for Sadiq Charles. Maybe he can make some noise. How about Nicholas Petit Frere? He was really good at Ohio State, and then when he first started playing for the Titans, I thought he looked pretty solid. And then something happened after that, and he was suspended for a little bit. Was that last year? Um, you know, but the talent is in there, and you get a good coach who coached some Ohio State tackles last year. Obviously, or coach one and Dewan Jones. So. That's a big-time guy to watch out for for that right tackle spot. I actually almost would have preferred putting him at left tackle and then putting keeping Latham at right, but Callahan knows what he's doing there. Uh, I think Latham would be fine at left and maybe Petit Ferrer at right. So they do have options. Even though people are knocking that offense line, we are learning. They have options. They have guys with upside. How about, how about Jalen Duncan, too? I just remembered that. They drafted him out of Maryland, and he was a guy – way before that process, like future first round pick because the traits, but didn't play that well, end up dropping a little bit, but a really good pick for them last draft. Uh, but he went prospect evaluation by everybody, you know, but you know, for myself, like this is a raw prospect with a lot of upside. Like I don't want him to play right away. So maybe now he takes a little bit of a leap and he's got a good coach. So they actually have options there. They have options. The more I'm talking, the more I'm re- realizing it. So Evan kind of bringing up some of the options I thought was pretty cool there. Um, uh, but yeah, what else we got here from our ex subscribers? Uh, good, good secondary, but can the rest of defense keep up? And I'm glad that Gavin Miller brought that up. Cause and that's kind of my point. Like what my, what to watch section is things that people really need to watch they're not talking about enough like watch for these things good secondary i think they have a really good run defense i think that interior defense line is really good and harold landry arden key these are good players um will landry stay healthy i would i would hope so he stayed healthy last year uh can arden key be like a full-time guy there so those are kind of the questions but a linebacker's a little bit of a question uh but i do think there is more than just the secondary I, I, my favorite part actually is the run it, the interior defense line and what they can be in terms of run defense and interior pressure um, and then, yeah, could linebackers surprise? I think it's another good point. I think it's another good point because uh, to bring up because they they don't have the biggest name linebackers. When when you say Kenneth Murray, what does everyone say? Bust. The guy was a bust. The Chargers trade up in first round to get him. Uh, he was pretty hyped out of Oklahoma. Bust. And I agree with the statement so far, but I'd say not so fast on labeling him in that in you know for his career. Chargers had a lot of guys that didn't work out. He also was used in unique ways at Oklahoma, which made him great. And I didn't think the Chargers used him that that way. I think the Titans could, they, you know, Oklahoma rushed him off the edge at time. I think the Titans, because uh, they didn't really fill, you know, the depth area of, of that group, and they could use him in rotation off the edge, starting at middle linebacker, maybe blitz him more. Um, I, I think he could be a lot better. And Cedric Gray, I was a huge fan of, um, you know, and Denar Wilson, you know, coming from the Ravens and, you know, the Eagles year before that. Uh, I think he can really help these guys, these guys out. So maybe the linebacker group, you know, could hurt them. That's kind of the make or break, I guess. The linebacker group and the offense line offense, but um, well, I, a linebacker group's never going to make you though. You know, it's just I, I don't think it's going to break them either. It was kind of going back to my point where I, I love the run defense because of the interior defensive line, and you could say the linebackers could could stop that from happening. I don't I don't think so. I think you look at the team like the Lions last year. Um, Cameron Sullivan, will the new offense identity be? It's a good point, kind of what we talked about. Are they a run team? Are they a pass team? Are they both? They're going to switch it up every week. It's what could make them very, very sneaky team here. Uh, how will the free agency additions contribute to both sides of the ball? Sneed Awuzie, yeah, they didn't even start at corner. They should be a pretty good one-two punch. They had Boyd. They had Ridley. We kind of touched on that. I mean, these are really solid players here. Um I guess a lot of new players, how will they click right away? It's a big question there. Can Levis be long-term solutions? So I guess we can learn that this year. Um, but if he play, hey, somebody else said that. Yeah. Uh, Max Keller, uh, he, he came in strong, see the expectations, but how alarmed should the Titans fans be? If Levis has a disappointing year with this raw, with this roster. Yeah. That's, uh, it's a good question. Okay. If he's like extremely dis- disappointing, like if he's bad and that, I think that kind of decides that it's just how t- things are today. And Brian Callahan 
didn't really pick Levis. Maybe he'll pick his own quarterback. I don't see that happening. But, yeah, let's say he's like, eh, like with the receivers they have, like in Brian Callum, you maybe like we're going, eh, like I wish it was a little bit more from Will Levis. Like what's the decision then? Like how – because I don't think there's a lot on him to be like, he doesn't need to be great this year. He doesn't need to be like, he doesn't need to be fantastic or super consistent. Obviously you want that, that to happen. Um, but it's going to be interesting if he's like kind of meh, like, you know, or like he has, like he's inconsistent. Like he's like, he was at the, last year. Uh, like if he stays like that, where one, like one week, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. He won that game. He's slinging around the, the field it's fun to watch. Like this guy's got potential. Like, uh, and then there's some weeks where he kind of, you know, throws, he has some turnovers or takes some sacks, uh, stuff like he did in Kentucky that last year. Uh, if he's a little, inc- if he's extremely inconsistent, which is possible, it's, it's possible. What's the call? What's the call? So that's a, it's a big question. I think I'm on the positive thinking side of Will Levis. The more I'm talking, the more I'm thinking I, I could rank him higher in terms of my quarterback rankings. To me, he has like, he has that it. I don't know. He has that swagger. Like you know, and I'm not talking about like how he acts and how he dresses, anything like that. That'd be ridiculous. But how he carries himself on the football field, he has confidence. Some people think he's a little cocky. I think he's confident in a good way. Where you need that when it comes to quarterbacks. Um, I think coming back in a game like the Dolphins game where there was things not going well, there was sloppy situations. That whole mishandle you know, play with Derrick Henry. Um, that when that happened, it's like, that was awful. The game's over. Nope. You know? So, um, I think he has that, that confidence, that swagger to him. So I'm excited to watch for this year. Uh, and then Cameron Sullivan also says, can they survive a tough division and schedule on unpredictable alone? So he, you know, again, it's gonna be an unpredictable team. Like we talked about, um, it's a good question. It's like something that no one knows. Like we're pretty confident that they're going to be tough to deal with early in the year because no one knows what to expect, and they have that balance. Will it continue once there's a game plan out? So it's a it's a really good question uh, as the year goes along uh, there. And then Anthony Kramer, uh, was he got new offense? Um, yeah, I kind of mentioned some of the things that – yeah, I guess something we did mention, uh, life without Derrick Henry. Like I guess you got to bring that up because even though they have a great one-two punch, Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears – they had one last year, Derrick Henry, Tiger Spears, and Derrick Henry made that team, you know, so will they miss him? For some reason, it's it's funny that he says that because now it makes me think about it a little bit more. For some reason, like, I, I don't, like, I want to say they don't miss him at all, even though how, like, he was so damn important, um, but it's just a totally different style of offense. I, they'll miss him a little bit, but I, maybe not as much as people think, but it's a really good question, and can Levis be the guy? Um Bill Callahan's impact on the offensive line because he is the best in football, or has been the best in football, and the D line rotation with Simmons and, and Sweat. I, I guess that you know the knock on that is the rotation. You know, do they have a ton of depth there? Um, so those guys got to stay. Simmons got to stay healthy. Sweat got to, um, I guess, stay in, in shape. I think people knock him too much for that. He played plenty of snaps at Texas. Um, he moves better, better than you would think, uh, but he's got to stay in playing weight form mainly stay out of trouble stay out of trouble though so those guys if those guys are on the field if they're not that's the thing though if one of those guys is out like i think it's a big difference i think it's a ma- and a lot of teams are like that i think it's a major difference but we talked about evan bringing up um the right side of the offense line specifically i think people talk about yeah, they talk about the titans offense line center is going to be good scratch is going to be good latham's going to have up and downs some people some people probably think he won't be good i like latham um It'll have his ups and downs still, but mainly, good point, right side of the line, the battles, and it made me think, and it made me list some guys he didn't list as well. Uh, They got depth. They actually have pretty good, it depends on who plays where, though. Um, I think, yeah, because again, Brunskill's going to be a guard. He's a guard that could play center. They're not going to play him at center. Um, Or he actually has some tackle reps in the past as well, but he's going to play guard, I think, in my opinion, but Callahan could change things up. Um. So we'll see. Uh, but Raidens could be guard or tackle. Uh, Sadiq Charles, I like. I would love for them to give him a good look at tackle. Back to the LSU days there uh, with Callahan coaching up that offensive line. Uh, and then Watson, who they brought in, he's going to be a tackle. Uh, Patrick Freer, a tackle. And then Jalen Duncan, another tackle. So I think the tackle depth is looking pretty good, but some guys. So how would the guard depth be? Uh, but they actually have some guys there now that we're thinking about it. That offensive line could go from – 
they were dead last last year. I thought them and maybe the Commanders. Uh, I predicted going into the year the Commanders 32, the Titans 31. I think it ended up being maybe the, the, the flip, but we were right on the same, right on the page there. Um, but they can, the Titans can go from 32nd offense line to I'd have to look at the. We're gonna we eventually rank every unit. Um, I actually think they can surprise some people. I mean, they're not going to be in no way will they be top 10. Could they be around 15? Could they could they be around that range? Because the, what they've added in um, the upside and then having Bill Callahan. So big questions there. The Titans are was a good team for this this series because a lot of questions and they're underrated for the reasons I explained. But we'll see that could backfire on me. Uh, but yeah, make sure to comment which team is next. Also, let me know if you know anybody that calls them the Tennessee Titans. I've heard kids specifically say the Titans, not the Titans. Um, so let me know if you ever heard that. I think it's pretty hilarious. Uh, so, so I had to stop myself in this video. So, but a lot of time I'm calling them the Titans for that reason. Um, but that'll wrap it up for this one. Check out all of our videos on our channel, but thanks for watching. Goodbye.